Strangely enough, we actually met and wrote a few lines on the incident. It is hot, blistering, stifling and humid. Here in the jungles of Malaya, our fate is uncertain. The fighting is frantic. I've seen men die a hundred deaths. Our withdrawal becomes a retreat. The enemy is ruthless. Our position, somewhat hopeless. We stand our ground, machine gun firing, bodies falling, then getting up again. She fire, right flank, they're coming from the side. Stand two, stand two, another screams. Some face their fate, load their weapons, determined, but confused. Others run. Who do you follow? This isn't a war, I thought to myself. It's a massacre. Our friends fall lifeless in a hail of British bullets. Our proud tanks soldier on, their tracks crushing air-like positions. But they get hit and die sweating in their cramped turrets. But it is here that we will taste final victory. Manchuria, China, Hong Kong and Malaya. The greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. Tenno Haika Banzai. Though we have won the battle, I'm not sure that we have won the war. And history will be written by the victors, the losers. Well, we haven't lost yet. <laughs> I'll finish that line later. So the Japs landed on the 8th, right? All through that time, right up until very near the end, the hotels and cabarets were partying the night away. Absolute fun. When the first bombs were dropped on the city, there was a, a brilliant moon and the lights were on in full. Air raid warden told me it was a practice. Well, if it's a practice, they're overdoing it, mate, I said. The building opposite Guthrie's office has been completely destroyed. And so, of course, the next time there was a blackout. Of course, now there were blackout dancers in some of the cabarets even more fun. You see, it's not just that we were complacent. We had a firm belief in the fighting ability of our forces. We trained and trained and been told that these slit-eyed, short-sighted nips were inferior. <laughs> so, we're all rocking back and forth on the transports and Colonel Suji comes. He's the officer in charge of military affairs. And he comes in, he speaks to the troops and uh, he has a plan. Came to him in a dream, really. Now, the question is how to cross into Malaya with the least resistance. Now, his plan is we all disguise ourselves in Thai uniforms, rush across the border and shout, Japanese enemy, very terrible! Of course, too. Make it more credible, we'll bring a few Thai dancers along with us. Baru, Penang. Without dressing up in Thai uniforms, by the way. You know what they would do? They would push advanced scouts to draw our fire. 
and then the whole body will outflank us to the jungle. When you see your flanks being attacked, what do you do? Retreat and consolidate, or risk being cut off. We had to change our tactics. Then, of course, it became a fighting withdrawal. Slim river. Static defense simply did not work. Travel 20 kilometers, fight two battles. Indians, Gurkhas. Repair four or five bridges daily. Anzacs, Malays. Speed is the key. Hell, even the Pommies did pretty good. Speed is the key. Everyone stands too. We strain to listen for the boats through the night. The battalion has Vickers machine guns, Bren guns, pistols, rifles, even vintage Lewis guns. We have searchlights that will light up the killing zones and our own mortars and artillery will fire on, on pre-planned positions once they get the signal. I look over to John. He's a good bloke. He nods. He's nervous, but he'll do his job. My finger is on the trigger. I hope they'll catch hell. 500 meters. 300. 200. 100. Hmm. Round fly and kick up the water near the boat. Steer left, the captain says. Right, head for the tree. Then I heard them. Mortars. A shrill whistle and then... When the boat reached the shore, all I remember hearing was this officer going... They drop like flies. There's just too bloody many of them. The, 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 more you, the more you fry, the harder it is to see. Then I see five men charging towards us. My friend, Tsukamoto, ran next to me. He's from my village, a good man. The British had Indian soldiers, so we had already planned from the start to run forward shouting, Punjab, don't shoot! All you see is the muzzle flash. I look over at Sukumoto. He's dead, shot in the throat. Our mates were falling back across the mangrove swamps. We scattered all over the place. We had to go. I got up and ran after them. Bakayama! I'm mad, so mad. The branch was just too bloody heavy. John was frantically tearing his apart, throwing the pieces everywhere so the enemy couldn't make use of them. Jesus Christ, hurry up! I see them, point my rifle, set my sights and squeeze the trigger. I pull the bolt to clear the jam as fast as I can. The shot hit him right in the middle of his back. Poor bastard. He was gone. I had to leave him. I run. And then there were rumours that some of our allied forces have begun to desert us. When you um, pull back, you run into your own troops from other areas. You start talking. I overheard the Aussies, diggers they call themselves, telling other diggers that the game is up. I'm guessing some were preparing to run. Yes, it happened. Some did. But I can tell you the Pommies are probably guilty of it too. And it probably happened to the enemy as well. What about the fifth columnists though? Those locals working for the Japs when they landed. You know, there's this um, park near the city called the Botanic Gardens. Um, place with uh, nicely laid out greenery and, uh, and flowers and the whole lot. 
apparently the desertions got so bad they had to set up a stragglers post right there in the park itself just to collect the Australians who had uh, been separated from their own units. It was probably the closest they came to jungle warfare. Our whole company plus a few supporting units were marching along a narrow single lane road. We were quite tightly bunched up together. You cannot fire at the first thing that moves. You have to wait for it. Wait for it. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Everyone fires. Then more shouting, more firing. Ah, reload, short burst, long burst, reload. Semua orang jatuh. The rounds cut through our whole column. No! Masha! Run! Run, you fool! Cease fire! Cease fire! Someone shouts. A few short bursts, and then all is quiet. If I were them, I would probably want revenge. It may never, never really justify the actions, but it may partially be the reason why something else happened. Don't take my word for this, but I heard there's been some sort of massacre there. Apparently, scores of patients have been bayoneted in their beds. Doctors and nurses taken outside and shot. We are exhausted. Our supply lines are now stretched far beyond what is acceptable. Now, I wasn't there, but what I heard was that when our advanced troops moved up towards the hospital, they were fired at by retreating platoons of the 44th Indian Brigade. They used that hospital as cover. How can you justify killing unarmed men and women? Even after you, you've captured the place, even if you were supposedly being shot at. And, it, and in a hospital at that. There are, there are rules, even in war. It is the beginning of the end. The reservoirs are captured. Civilians and army deserters are leaving the island by the hundreds. Our troops have lost their fighting spirit. They're good troops, but poorly led. Malaya Command are burning their documents. There is talk of a surrender. We fought at Kranji, Nisun, Bukit Panjang, Reformatory Road. Jurong, Bukitima, Pase Panjang. Our frontline troops are being driven close to breaking point. Some units have almost totally run out of ammunition. It has been a bloody seven days, and I fear it will be the start of a bad time for both sides. When we meet the enemy, there's strangely no fear, no anger, yet. It's not about the politics, not just your faith, not just your loyalty, not just what you fight for. For a split second in battle, we are all almost equal. In that moment, what happens before or after the fight is insignificant. It's just you, your rifle and the person who's trying to kill you. We fight. We fight so that the generations after us remember that young men once came together on a small island and killed each other in the name of freedom for both sides, just as they will continue to do so a hundred years from now. We fight so that history remembers us. And history will be written by the victors. The losers are faceless. 
their stories forgotten.